Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tim, and I am making a Fibonacci video today. I thought I already had made one, but apparently that's not the case. I, I was looking all over for it. I just cannot find it. I may have deleted it. I am not sure, but somebody had asked me to cover a Fibonacci, and I said, man, I've already done that, and I looked, and I just could not find it, so here I am. Uh, this shouldn't be a long video. Fibonacci is actually a pretty easy, easy to explain. All right, so first let me get this off my chest, because I always forget to say this. So the last video I made, I remember I forgot to mention that it goes, okay, so you can lay a fib from the, the low, lowest low, you know what I mean? That may be from here, may be from here. I don't think it makes much of a difference. It's not that much of a difference in price. But you can lay it from here. I think this is actually, this dip right here is a little lower. But sometimes with those wicks, I think this is a little more reliable because the close is open. But like I said, uh, it's not much of a difference. So uh, ultimately, you can pick or choose whatever you want and see how it looks. And you can see how the market probably uh, decided to pick one or the other themselves. And the reason why I assume that this is where they want to start is because it's one of the lowest lows of this period. You know what I mean? So you can start from here. Technically, you can even start from back here. It doesn't really matter. You can see that support has been very, uh, very abundant at 29K. So like I said, that would be a good place to lay your fib. It doesn't really matter where you lay it. it just matters if you lay it from here, technically this would be the high. You know what I mean? It's This is with the all-time high. So 65k. So let's just do that. Let me see. Show you the. There's your fib retracement. That's the traditional Fibonacci. So uh, when you want to do it, you want to come to the lowest low after a peak. So like, let's say you hit here. Now we hit there. Now we came up here. Okay. So this is the lowest low down here where we had, had a lot of support. You can see the dotted line all the way across the chart. Look at how much support we have at that level. We have many bounces off of here. So, like I said, that's a good place to lay the fib. So, what I wanted to show you again, and before you don't do the fib, come turn this magnet on. The reason why I say is you can see how it sticks to the candles. That's much uh, more reliable than, uh, say, it's just me using my brain, you know? Uh, so, like I said, there you go. It's magnet to magnet. The, I mean, like I said, the magnet connected me to the top of that and that so I know it's true so look you have your Fibonacci laid and what's a weird is if you look at it look how well it worked I mean there was some resistance here but this right here is obvious that it worked you know what I mean and it was after the fact because look you wouldn't know that until after this you know what I mean so it's one of those things where hindsight's always 2020 it didn't work so well on this one but it looked like we uh caught it up here hung out for a little bit drop below it and it, we rocketed it right back up and uh that could have a lot to do with all the bullish uh momentum we had back in that time but there was support at that level as well but we didn't have much data to go off of so we were really just shooting in the dark you know but long story short a fibonacci once you have the layout like this this is the hard part to get to this part because then you have uh, lower highs and lower lows, which is bearish. And that's the end of that, this bull push right here, okay? We had uh, one peak, two peak, three peak. I don't know what the, I need to study that. There's a different type of TA that I don't ever use, but uh, I forget what it's called. But they use these, they use, it's, this is what it reminds me of, these increasing peaks and then it starts to die off and it's, this even looks like a wick off almost, you know what I mean? But the thing is, that's not really what matters. This Fibonacci is now true because you have the lowest low over here, the highest high. And now you have a very reliable, uh, say, hey, look, we came down here, lost it, tried to back up tw two days in a row, tried to get back above it and failed. This 0.618 Fib was too strong of resistance. And if you pay attention to all that, even though this descent was pretty fast, it was still uh, ultimately somewhat predictable. If you knew how to uh, use a Fibonacci anyways, because look, every time we bounced off of this zero Fib down here, 
I mean, it was very often in this period, and that's because that was support even over here. So, like I said, that's a reliable fit. This is actually a perfect fit to uh, make a video off of. Even though we don't have... Uh, the, the way I look at it, guys, is the farther you get away, the less likely the fib is going to remain true. And the reason that is, is just uh, people, uh, you know, get better ideas. Let's say they want to lay a fib here. There's no nothing wrong with having more than one fib on your chart, just so you know. You can have as many fibs as you want. So now I have two fibs. It's a little, uh, a little much for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that first one. I can always reapply it. But now we have another fib, and you can see it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, you know what I mean? And what did I do? I came from the lowest low and went to the highest high. Now, I could have done this, too. This is probably lower, so it's probably more accurate to use this because you still want to use the lowest low, uh, technically. So, look. Now, I mean, it does, didn't change much, but you have a nice few instances in here of support and resistance. Nothing's going to be perfect with the fib. But, like I said, uh, play with it. Uh, once you get to uh, understand how they work, you can start applying them in different scenarios and learning. You can say, hey, this is really, this really looks solid. And then it can give you a, it's not really, I don't want to say it tells you where support and resistance is because it's not always accurate. Sometimes things fail. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we drop through it here, drop through it there. I mean, like I said, there's plenty of instances where nothing's perfect. It's trading, guys nothing is ever going to be perfect so don't ever think i remember whenever i was teaching this woman uh, she was a very uh very good friend of mine but she uh thought fibonacci told you the future she's like it's supposed to tell you where support and resistance is right i'm like it does tell you but not like a uh, psychic would tell you you know what i mean that's what she was expecting and it was just like I hate to burst your bubble, but nothing in trading. There's no indicator that's going to do that. I mean, the Orox indicator has an up and down uh, deal, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not 100%. It's more like 70% is what they claim. And you know what? I have no reason to argue with that. But look, I laid the FIB upside down, too, to cover this downtrend, okay? There's top, uh, the highest high all the way to the lowest low is where I laid it. You can see the two points when I have my finger on it, so... This is the lowest low. Now you can see instances where this actually did. Look, hit the .618 with precision and down, bounced just like that. And it was just, that's perfect TA. If you knew how to lay a fib, you could have said, hey, I'm going to sell here, buy here, and then sell. You know what I mean? And there's different indicators that could have helped you figure that out. But uh, a fib alone is a very useful, but I suggest using other indicators, at least until you understand everything, and then you decide. But in the meantime, look at how accurate. Fibonacci is almost scary sometimes to me. It's so accurate. You know what I mean? It's almost like, what the heck is going on? What are these magic numbers? You know what I mean? And how does it always work out like that? I know it does because traders all see the same thing you know what i mean they know that that's the highest high that's the lowest low so they're gonna set their or this is the lowest low i'm sorry but they're gonna set their fibs based on that information guys and you have to understand that that's the reason this stuff works it's all like a one big uh matrix of everybody working together you know what i mean and it's uh that's the reason why most trading works if people understand where support and resistance is in these cases, these lines of the uh, Fibonacci can help you figure that out because a lot of traders are obviously using them. You can see there's very many instances where like here, here, here even. If, I mean, there's uh, there's always going to be imperfections, okay? So it's not like you're always going to hit. But right here, it was a, a surprise. Once we broke above it, bam, we dropped all the way back down to the 618. And you know what? The 618 is reliable support. I think that's why we got our balance. You know why? Because look at this. We were heading straight to the moon right here. And bam, dead. Drop to the 786. And then we proceeded up. This Fibonacci is worth its weight in gold in my opinion. And there's also other Fibonacci tools. And I, if I haven't made a video on them, I will. But I'm going to go ahead and end it here. The Fibonacci is actually quite simple. I know people are kind of intimidated to lay it. But to have fun with it play with it you're not going to hurt anything delete it make another one uh mess around with the settings i mean like i said you can always press default you just need to understand what you're doing you know what i mean watch it even if you don't uh understand everything from what i explained in this video it's a uh, 
from what I explained, it's very simple. There's nothing, uh, there, you can go from bottom to top or top to bottom. You know what I mean? It is a, uh, Fibonacci's are like a, a paintbrush. Play with it. Uh, you can always erase it and start again. You know what I mean? And see what works. That's how I learned how to lay them properly. Uh, I was taught in a way of how they work and stuff, but I was intimidated as well, just like everybody else. And I was like, how do you lay these things? And it just played with it and played with it until I decided, hey, this is how it works. And you start sharing it with the community every once in a while and seeing what they think. You don't even have to ask them, is this right? You can just lay the fib on there and share your chart and say, hey, here's what I think is going to happen. We're going to bounce off the 786 or whatever, you know. And uh, if people say, that fib is laid totally wrong, don't always take it as a total insult. Take it as a, a lesson learned. That's what I used to do. I remember nobody would help me, so I just lay, I just make a chart up, and I would get all the people to tell me critique it, basically, and tell me, oh, you don't even know anything about uh, charts. And I'm like, yeah, well, what's wrong with it? And then they'll tell me, oh, this and that and that and that. And that's how I would learn, you know what I mean? So like I said, uh, don't always get so upset with people when they critique you like that, because it can help. It helped me a lot. And uh, my desire to uh, rub pie in their face was the only reason why I kept going. You know what I mean? It's almost like somebody insulted you. You're like, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to uh, learn this just to prove you wrong. <laughs> Anyways, it was fun, guys. Like I said, I'm going to make a few other videos today. So uh, I hope you are looking forward to that. Uh, have a good day.